Good morning. My name is Ed Wilson. I'm the Microsoft Scripting Guy. And today I want to talk to you about Windows PowerShell classes. One of the really cool things about Windows PowerShell 5 is that it introduces the concept of classes. Well, I take that back. Actually, Windows PowerShell has always had the concept of classes. But uh, beginning with PowerShell 5 on Windows 10, we actually have a new keyword, which is called class. Now, the cool thing about classes is that basically they become templates for objects. It's kind of important to remember that a class in and of itself is not an object, and objects in and of themselves are not classes. Objects may be members of classes, but they are not classes themselves. An object is an instance of a class. So when I have a date-time object, um, it um, is like a date and a time, and that comes from the from the date time the system dot date time class, which gives me the ability to actually create that object itself. So, what are our classes uh, for? Well, you can think of a class as being a, a holder or a container for methods and properties. Now, in other languages, uh, these can also contain enums and events, but for Windows PowerShell. Uh, purposes we're primarily interested in the methods and, and properties now the thing to keep in mind is that a method does things uh, so for instance um, we have a, a system diagnostic process uh, class and it has a um, a method terminate uh, or uh, which give me the ability to stop a process it also has a create method which gives me the ability to create a um, a new instance of the process class that is to start a new process it also has uh, properties properties describe things uh, so for instance a process is going to have a name property uh, and stuff like that so if I was to take an example that uh, most of us are familiar with, um, I'm going to create a car class. So uh, with this car uh, class, then I use the class keyword and then I give it a name. Uh, if you look at the syntax here, this is very, very similar to the syntax that we have for creating a function uh, in Windows PowerShell. We have the keyword, we have the name, and then we have the curly brackets, the, uh, the script block, the braces, uh, whatever you want to call the things, um, the little swivelly uh, french fry looking things. And the inside there is where I put my code. So what am I going to put my code? Well, I can put in properties. I can put in uh, methods. So if I had a car class, then what would be some of the properties uh, that might be used to describe a car? Well, you've got the VIN, the vehicle identification number. Now, this is going to be pretty much a unique number uh, that would be used to uniquely identify this uh, car from any other car. We can kind of think of that as a process ID or a PID is used to uniquely identify a process on a, a system on a computer. And so these numbers are, uh, to me, they look random. I don't know if they really are or not, but these are just, you know, great big old hairy, hairy numbers. Now, in reality, um, that vehicle identification number, because it has the dashes and other stuff, it, it will be treated more like a string, but we'll talk about that later. Now, then you have the make of the car. So now the make of a car, there's only so many companies that make cars. So you've got like Chevy, you know, or General Motors, you've got Ford, you've got BMW, you know, Toyota, stuff like that. These are the makers of cars. Now, because there's a limited number of those, then I might decide that I would like to um, make that an enumeration, you know, so that I could only choose one of a select number of makers of these cars. Then you've got the model of the car. Yeah, the, the model of the cars is going to change quite more frequently than the maker of the car. So, you know, some new models get, um, get introduced in a new year. Some of them um, you know, get deleted, if you will. Uh, then you've got the co uh, color. There's only so many colors that cars come in, and uh, so I could uh, kind of, that would be another good field for making an enumeration. You got the year that the car was made, you got the number of wheels, 
Now, um, I might think that cars have four wheels, that all cars have four wheels. Uh, if they do, then I could actually maybe make that a, a static uh, property of the car class. And, you know, so, so that any car at any time is going to have four wheels, and I could pretty much define that uh, number. Uh, when I wrote my blog, somebody came in, uh, posted a comment that said that, yeah, hey, car some cars have three wheels. Yeah. And, uh, okay, well, cool. Then uh, this is another reason then of why you want to do your research and design your class up front. You got the number of doors. Obviously, some cars have four doors. Some cars have two doors. Uh, some cars may have five doors. Some of them... I don't know, might only have a single door. Uh, who knows? Uh, maybe the car doesn't have any doors at all and you jump in through the sunroof. Uh, so that would be there. Type of top, obviously. Is it a hard top? Is it a convertible? In the old days, we had vinyl tops and then we had like half vinyl tops and you know, other stuff. Then who knows? They may introduce. Um, probably got some cars if not now then soon that'll have like solar panels you know for the top and all of that uh, so those would be some of the properties that would be used in describing a, um, a car your car class then a car pretty much in and of itself without any methods meaning it doesn't do anything is going to be pretty much useless so obviously you want to have the drive down the road method you want to have the stop at a stop sign method maybe play music method set cruise control method the park now, I drive down the road, yeah, it's not, it shouldn't be anything that's going to require a whole lot of uh, special things. You know, so maybe you set that as a, um, as a static method, uh, maybe park. Uh, you always need to be able to park your car, so maybe you define that as a static method. There could be events that might be associated with your, um, with your car. So, for instance, you might have the run out of a gas event, uh, the failure to start event, run a red light, go too fast event. Yeah, you know, these are things that might be exceptions. You know that you may want to be able to track or to uh, to keep track of. It may be that. Um, when you create your car class that there's certain things that you absolutely have to have uh, and that maybe you've got some other things that you don't necessarily need to have. The important thing about it, um, not car class, that's just an example. The important thing about Windows PowerShell classes though is that it is absolutely positively necessary that you spend some time doing design work. You've got to design your class, you've got to think through the implications, how you're going to use the class, all of these different things before you actually start writing your code. Uh, Dr. Scripto says that one hour uh, spent in design work will prevent you 10 hours of rework later on in life. And I'd say that's probably a pretty good figure, pretty good thing to keep track of. So. I'm Ed Wilson, I'm the Microsoft Scripting Guy, and this is an introduction to Windows PowerShell Classes.